Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I figured we could just hang out, repot some plants, and answer some of your questions. I asked you guys to ask me questions on my Instagram, and if you're not already following me there, you should go do that so you can be involved in future videos like this. I wrote the questions down on my tablet because I'm filming on my phone, so obviously I can't look at Instagram at the same time to see what questions you guys asked. So if you see me looking back over here, I'm just looking at my tablet. Also, I'm hoping you guys can hear me a little bit better because I did end up buying just a little cheap mic for my camera to hopefully improve the sound quality. It's just a cheap little $40 shotgun mic I got off of Amazon, but I'm hoping it improves the quality a little bit because it is a shotgun mic and shotgun mics pick up stuff that's right in front of it versus an iPhone microphone, which is omnidirectional and it picks up literally everything. Anyways, enough about that. Let's get to repotting some plants. So today I'm gonna to be replanting a little parlor palm. We also have this little pickle plant. You would have seen it in this pot in my houseplant tour video, but it was just resting in its nursery pot into here. I didn't actually get around to planting this before I filmed the tour, so that's what we're gonna to do today. I also have these little Swedish ivy plants. This one is already planted in the container, but what I wanted to do now that this one has rooted quite a bit is combine these two. I don't think there's enough room in this pot for the both of them, especially once they start growing, so I'm gonna be taking this one out of the pot and moving them into a whole new container altogether. And then here we have my little lemon button fern. It started going a little brown in some spots, even though I'm misting it quite frequently to keep up the moisture. Although the brown doesn't really look like it's from dryness, it kind of looks like it's rotting, so maybe I'm misting it too much. I think I might be over misting out of paranoia because I had an autumn fern a couple months ago and it died because it uh, wasn't getting enough humidity. So maybe I'm overcompensating for that. And then here we have my silver lace fern. This one is doing pretty well in comparison to the lemon button fern. There are a couple of dry spots, but nothing I'm super concerned about. I also originally wanted to replant my burrow's tail today. As I mentioned in my houseplant tour video, I wanted to move it into a hanging basket, but I am not emotionally prepared to do so today. I think I might actually make that into a separate video. The video is just gonna be me stressing out for 10 minutes straight. Okay, let's get to planting. I'm gonna be using this Promix Premium Potting Mix. I've used both Promix and Miracle Grow in the past, but I find that lately Miracle Grow's soil quality is just not the greatest. However, I've had pretty good luck with Promix, and I think I'm converted. <laughs> so. I'm gonna be doing something a little controversial. Most of the pots I have don't have drainage holes in them. So what I'm gonna do is put a couple of rocks in the bottom. A lot of people are torn on this because putting rocks in the bottom of a container kind of gives you a false sense of security when it comes to watering your plants. Basically, if you put rocks in the bottom of your pot, you might think that you know your plant is safe from root rot because the water will have somewhere to drain. But in reality, you could have standing water in the rocks and that can still lead to root rot. Basically, you just kind of want to learn what your plant's watering needs are. I find it also really helps to have a moisture meter, but I still do like to include rocks as a sort of just-in-case scenario, but I don't solely rely on it to make sure that my plants don't get overwatered. So the first question I got is, what is my favorite flower? I actually have two favorite flowers. The first one I really like is a daisy. The first tattoo I actually got is a daisy on my hip in memory of my Nana. I also really like forget-me-nots as well. I have a daisy and forget-me-not tattoo on my arm in memory of my mom. So yeah, you could say I definitely like daisies and forget-me-nots. So I don't need to add a ton of soil into this one. It actually fits in the pot perfectly. I'm just gonna add just a tiny bit to kind of freshen up the top layer. The next question is, when is the best time of year to repot your plants? Ironically, not now. <laughs> Usually the springtime is the best time to repot your plants because that's when your plants will start experiencing growth. In the winter, plants tend to be a lot more dormant, so there's not a lot of root development or leaf development. But in the springtime, you might notice that your plants start to get a little tight in their containers, so that's probably the best time for when you should replant them. So when I finish putting the dirt into my pot, what I like to do is just tap the sides so that the soil settles naturally. I don't like to press it down or anything just because it makes it compact for no reason. Plus, you can see if there are any areas that you missed. For example, you can see I need to put a little bit more here, and so I do just that. 
How have you guys been doing lately with everything going on? I've personally been doing okay. I started working again, albeit working from home, uh, kind of at the beginning of January. So it's kind of nice to get back into a bit of a routine. I find, especially when my mental health is not doing the greatest, having some sort of routine or schedule can kind of keep me on track and stop me from becoming a complete depressed couch potato. <laughs> I'm definitely starting to go a little stir crazy. <laughs> I really just want it to be warm out again, which is funny because I actually really love the winter, but I think maybe it's because this year my dad and I were not doing our ski trip. Usually we do a ski trip every year out to Western Canada, but we figured, you know, with everything going on, it's probably not the best for us to fly anywhere right now. So I'm a little bummed about that. Usually that's the one thing that kind of keeps me going in the winter. But now that we're not doing that, I'm like, Okay, winter can f off now. <laughs> I just want it to be spring and warm so I can plant stuff outside. So here is the parlor palm, all nice and repotted. The next question is, when is it time to give up on a plant? So I feel like this answer is gonna be kind of a cop-out answer because it really depends. I'm the type of person where I'm very stubborn and I don't like to give up on things very easily. You might have seen in my houseplant tour that I have a very sad looking coffee plant. And I'll be honest, I've debated throwing it out a few times, but it's still putting out baby leaves. So I'm like kind of hopeful that it's gonna be okay. But basically I would say if you decide that a plant is not worth your time, energy or money in saving, then maybe it's time to check it out. The only other time would be if you have a really bad pest infestation, like mealybugs, because those guys are super hard to get rid of. I would say, you know, for the sake of all your other plants, just throw it out. This next question comes from my stepmom because she's very eager to start her vegetable garden. She asks, when is it time to start planting your vegetable seeds? Again, this answer is really an it depends situation. Mainly it depends on where you live and when the last frost is gonna occur. Here in Toronto slash the GTA, uh, where I live and where my family lives, the last frost is usually towards the end of May. So you'll kinda wanna work back from that. Usually what I like to do is plant my seeds maybe about 30 days before I'm planning to plant them outside. That's usually enough time to allow your plants to grow to a good seedling size before transplanting them. But you'll really just wanna to refer to your seed packs because they'll tell you how many days that you should plant it before you plan on growing it outside. But generally 30 days is usually a pretty good minimum. With things like beans or peas, stuff that grows really quickly, I tend to start the seeds for that about two weeks before I'm planning to move those outside, just because they do grow so quickly. Um, so I don't want pea seedlings just flopping over because they will need to start climbing on something. This pickle plant takes up a lot of dirt. The next question is, if I feed my plants colored water, will they turn different colors? I'm sure we've all seen those viral videos where you see somebody put a rose or a carnation into some colored water, and as the stem sucks up the water, it changes the color. This is true for fresh cut flowers, but for you know, just like house plants or stuff that is rooted, uh, it's not really true. I think a lot of this depends on the structure of the plant. If you're working with something like fresh cut flowers, the amount of time that the water has to travel through the plant to get to the flower is very few compared to if you were trying to turn like an actual rose bush a different color. Does that make sense? I feel like that didn't make much sense. The only plant I know for sure that you can change the color of uh, is hydrangeas. That doesn't have to do with necessarily feeding it colored water, it more so has to do with the soil acidity. If you want to change your hydrangeas to a pink or a blue or purple, there's specific soil amendments that you can buy for that. That'll change the pH level of your soil, which will then result in hydrangeas turning a different color. I'm realizing that maybe I should have used my cactus soil on my pickle plant because it is technically a succulent, but I've used just regular potting mix on succulents before and haven't had an issue, so I think we're gonna be okay. And there we have it. The pickle plant has been repotted. So with my Swedish ivies, I was trying to find a pot that was the same size as this nursery pot, which is about three and a half inches. I do have this one, which is about four, four and a half inches, I think. 
so I think they will probably be okay. But it's all I got for now until I can actually go out to thrift stores again and find something of a more appropriate size. That's also one thing I like to do is just actually change around the containers that the plants are in. Probably not the best idea, but I'm pretty indecisive. So this pot might not be the final resting place for the Swedish ivies. So the next question is, if you and your pets were plants, what would you guys be? I think Finn would be a Swedish ivy, <laughs> mainly just because much like the Swedish ivy, my dog does not stop. Doesn't stop barking, doesn't stop farting, doesn't stop snoring. The reason I say that is just because the mother plant I have of my Swedish ivy just does not stop growing. It has so much energy and I'm constantly taking cuttings from it. So I feel like its energy level matches my dog's energy level. Clementine, I think would be a moon cactus because she's very sweet and very pretty, but sometimes she can be a bit of a prick. As for me, um, I think I'd be a pothos. Again, I'm not saying that just because pothos are my favorite plants. I just think that pothos, they're nothing special, but they're still pretty cool. <laughs> they can also adapt and overcome any sort of living situation that they are thrust into, and I've had to do that a lot in my life. Sorry, this turned into an accidental therapy session. Uh, so we're just gonna move on. If I ever have a plant that's a little baby, a little more delicate, what I'll do is I'll kind of spread my fingers like Spock <laughs> and I'll just kind of move the plant like this so that when I dump it out, uh, my hands will catch it. I don't know. Although sometimes um, just gotta lift it up directly. I also don't know how well you can see it, but this guy has some pretty good roots on him. I find Swedish ivies grow roots super quickly. Like I think this isn't even a week's worth of growth. In relation to the last question, someone wanted to know when is Finn's birthday? Finn's birthday is July 11th, 2016. And I actually kind of have a funny connection with the date July 11th. So July 11th, 2014 was the day that my fiance and I had our first date. It was also the same date that my childhood dog passed away, so I had to go on this date and try not to cry. And then two years later, Finn was born on July 11th, and he is just as crazy and excited as my childhood dog was. So part of me likes to think that Finn is my childhood dog reincarnated. <laughs> There we have our Swedish Ivy babies. And last but not least, we have our little baby ferns. So one thing I was debating just because these containers are super small is just maybe plunking in the nursery pots so that they just sit like that. Because I need to water these guys super frequently and I actually like to bottom water these, which is essentially just where you get like a little cup of water and stick it in like that and it'll absorb water from the bottom. I think it'll be easier if I just put the nursery pots in here and then I can just pull them out. I know ferns roots don't need a ton of space to expand, so I think it might be okay hanging out in its nursery pot for a little longer. Do I want to do this? Let's answer another question while I think about it. Somebody asked, what are your favorite TikTok accounts? I hate how much I love TikTok. Oh god, this is a hard one. I have so many people that I follow. I would say that my top few favorites are Notorious Cree, Alexis Nicole, Lubalin. He's the guy who does the internet drama as song videos. Highly recommend checking them out. They're hilarious. I also really like puppy songs. Those videos just give me a huge boost of serotonin. I also really like uh, Partly Sunny Projects because plants. <laughs> I also really like Angry Reactions, uh, Selena Spooky Boo, and any UPS or FedEx delivery person who shows all the dogs that they meet on their roots. So I think I've decided that I'm just gonna leave these guys in their nursery pots and just have them sitting in the decorative pots. They go down far enough where you can't see the nursery pot itself, so I think I can live with that. And finally, the last question, how many plants can you fit in that ass? All right.
right, those were all the questions that you guys asked me. Everybody is looking happy in their new homes. I actually really enjoyed making this video. It's kind of nice just to sit down and chill and talk about whatever. If you guys want me to do something like this again in the future, be sure to let me know down in the comments. And on that note, uh, I think the sun is telling me to wrap it up because I'm starting to get blinded. <laughs> like and subscribe. I'll see you later. Bye. Oh no, <laughs> I can't reach the camera. Ah!